Okay, so moving forward in, in our discussion of cellular respiration, we're going to talk in detail about the first process that's called glycolysis. And glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. So I want to make sure we understand that this is happening in eukaryotic cells and this is happening in prokaryotic cells. So the other thing is, that's important, even though the, the overall reaction of cellular respiration requires oxygen, this portion, okay, does not require oxygen. Now let's get into the details. So uh, we have multi-step reactions that are going on from glucose and each of these, so when it has step number one, step number two, all of these, there is an enzyme that is catalyzing this reaction, a specific enzyme, and you'll notice that it has the enzyme name, okay, at the bottom. You don't need to know those enzyme names, but I do want to point out to you that most enzymes, their name ends in ASE. And so I do want you to know that just like when we talked about metabolism or the overall chemical reactions in the cell, most of these are mediated or catalyzed by, a, by an individual enzyme. That's what lowers the energy of activation so the reaction can go forward. Okay, we start with glucose, and you'll see that we have a conversion to glucose 6-phosphate. What's important is not for you to know those structures or to know the names of those, but to see that the cell is actually making an investment of ATP at this point. Remember, what's the, the overall goal of cellular re respiration? Well, it's to produce ATP for the cell. So this seems counterintuitive that there's an investment of ATP, if that's actually what we're after. But in fact, the cell has to invest not one, but two molecules of ATP at the beginning of glycolysis. Now, what I want you to see is, in step four, so, so uh, excuse me, back at the beginning, we need to make sure that we mark or note to ourselves that glucose has six carbons. So we're interested in following each one of these carbons all the way through until they become a carbon of carbon dioxide. So every carbon that we're beginning with in glucose, every one of these, will eventually end up as a carbon in carbon dioxide. So we follow it through, we get to step four, and we see that these six carbons of glucose are now broken apart into three carbon compounds. So we have two three carbon compounds, but we still have our six carbons. So if we count them up, we still have six carbons. We just now have two. It's been separated into two molecules rather than one. Okay. And we move on, continuing from there. Now what I want you to see is, here are these two carbon-containing compounds, right? There's three carbons here, and there's three carbons here. We still have all six carbons. So this part here that says two times, that means each of these, so this is taking us one of these molecules all the way through till the end of glycolysis where we get a pyruvate. Two times means each of these molecules is going to have to go through this process. Right, so we do that times two because we're tracking an entire glucose molecule. So we see that overall at the end, for every glucose molecule, we're going to get two molecules of pyruvate. So this is pyruvate at the end. And remember, it only shows one pyruvate because that's tracking from one molecule of 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate when we know that we have two of those from every molecule of glucose. So do we still have all six carbons? Yes, we do because pyruvate has three carbons and we have two of those so we haven't lost any carbons yet to carbon dioxide. The other thing I want you to see is we have a production of ATP so you can see that the arrow here What's coming in is ADP, and what we're getting out is ATP in both of these cases, whereas before we were investing ATP. So remember, this, this happens twice for every 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So if we do the math, we invested 2 ATP, so we were negative 2 ATP from the start, but we get 2 ATP out for every 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, meaning 4 total for each 
glucose. So we're positive to ATP at the end of glycolysis. So in addition to 2 pyruvate, it's important that we see that we get a, we, we have a net gain of 2 ATP. And the other important thing that I want you to see is right here, we have the generation of a molecule that's an electron carrier called NADH. Okay, and remember this, it's happening two times, so that means we have 2 NADH. Now these are electron carriers, and these are going to be very important on our last step when we talk about the electron transport chain. So we're going to keep track of how many of these NADH molecules we're generating as we go through this process. Now one last thing I want to point out to you is, where are the electrons coming from that, that are being carried by NADH? Well, we've seen that that glucose has been broken down, so bonds have been broken, therefore releasing electrons. So these electrons that have been picked up by NADH, these are from glucose.